to end. What are you trying to do? So a spine is an overall design of intention. All right? Okay? You want, you want to argue? No. It's a, uh, the design of what you're trying to do, the willful pattern that you're trying to achieve. Style is also an overall design. But of what? What you're trying to do? You see, when I question everything you do, this is my spine because it's my overall intention. It's the deliberate thing I'm doing, and it's a pattern of deliberation. Deliberately do this now, a moment later deliberately do this, a moment later deliberately do this. So you say my spine is to challenge or to extricate or to play devil's advocate. But what is style? Maybe the way you approach this. Part. The way? What's, which way? How do you mean way? Um, okay. <laughs> um, physical attributes. Yeah. Ah! Hmm. The physical aspect of it. In other words, if you like, the, the design aspect of it. The how, how you are doing rather than what you are doing. Some people uh, stylistically walk a particular way. Their action is to walk. Their action is to go from place to place. But the design that they use in going from place to place, the physical design, if it's consistent, if it goes through the entire fabric, is the style. Style is a formal design. It is a formal design for the entire thing, just as a spine is an action design. And don't confuse the two. It's a, uh, I know, a, a hair's breadth distinction, you would think. But yet, you see, Maria probably doesn't make that distinction because in trying to do something, she doesn't realize that the style is pretty inconsistent with the deed. I mean, if, for example, she's trying to shake hands, and I'm exaggerating, Stylistically and economically, it would be something like this. But somebody who has a mannerism, a flourish, will probably do something like this. That is her formal mannerism. And if you think that consistently she has an over-elaborate approach to doing things, then it could well be her style of behavior. But if it's going to be her style of acting, she's going to be stuck in the stereotype. Every role is going to look like everything else. Mm -hmm. So she's got to be able to be flexible about her styles. Yeah. Did she work, do, do you know if she worked with jazz on movement and body character sort of building? No, I don't. Sorry, can I ask you to ask the question again, Paige? If you could, Toby just was thinking of it. Could you ask the same question? Yeah. Did you know if she worked with jazz on the movement aspect of No, I didn't. Because maybe she needed to. Maybe she needed to work on her body and her stance so she could get rid of her own style. Yes. And she didn't work on it. Yes. She really needed that. I saw that yes, that was like. it's quite possible, yes. Mm. Uh, uh, what's her name? Maggie, uh, the English actress. Smith. Huh? Maggie Smith. That's a very uncommon name, which is why I forgot. <laughs> uh, Maggie Smith had a personal style for a long time she had to break. Her head lolled very much like you see a, a stereotyped Japanese doll. No matter what she did, her head was lolling. And she had to work like crazy to, first of all, eliminate that and keeping it from creeping into every show she was doing. But also, she had to cultivate deliberate styles for each character, which is going to be part of your problem as well. Much of your preparation and characterization has to do with working out formal designs for the character. Somebody may walk along like a boxer, you know, leading with his shoulders first. Somebody may walk, walk along like a stereotype mannequin, leading with the hips first. Now, if you're not working as a mannequin, you don't have that style worked into you automatically. And you have to rehearse it and cultivate it during rehearsals 
to the point where it is second nature. And this saturates everything you do throughout the entire production as your formal characteristic. All formal design. Because I'm going to say something in Maria's defense, I'm sorry. Right. Um, the point is that um, she met the author a couple of times, uh, this play is autobiographical, and we have a woman in classes who knows the author well, and when she saw Maria, she said she was just like him. Really? So she worked in the mannerisms of that person. <laughs> well, why, why are the kids pulling it out? Is it because the others did not stylize proportionally? Some did and some didn't. I mean, I saw the dress rehearsal, so I can't. Again, uh, you say Maria seems to have this style in other things as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She's she always been, because she's brave and courageous, she's been given things that need over the top acting. Maria works very hard, and Maria has done very naturalistic things. Well, I, I don't know. I saw her once before. Again, she needs, you know. Yeah. She's the bravest of the whole class, and that's why when they need something extraordinarily sort of over the top, she's the one that gets cast. Right, so it's a little bit like Brian Young in his production. In that case, those of you who have seen Maria in show by show, or show after show, are her personal mannerisms obtrusive to the point where the character is overlapped by her own mannerisms? In other words, do her personal mannerisms stick out so much that you can't see the character for it? Huh? They've only seen They've her They've only once seen her once before. Well, yeah, in that case, in it's an unfair years. question. Sorry. But th this is why I asked uh, when you thought you said she always does. So obviously you've only seen her once. Oh. Twice. Twice. Mm. Yeah, once before. Oh, once before. <laughs> so you only have two bits of evidence to go on. Well... Do you want to extrapolate from two bits of evidence? <laughs> mm. I think I brought it up because when I talk to her at school out of class, she's like that too. Mm. It's just a certain style she has, and she she's not you know she she brings it into everything she does. But you say everything. How many well, things? Well, the two things I've seen. It, yeah. How many things have you seen? Two. 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 Oh, but only the two, yes. Yeah, but seeing her out of them, having the same sort of characteristics, it to me it feels like I've been watching her on stage. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense, and I have to ask Zika <laughs> how to justify it. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Um, she, she carries her everyday life characteristics. Just sometimes on stage, she does it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying she does it. I don't know. I don't see her doing that in class. Mm. Mm. I, to me, like having seen only the two things, right? The what? What was it? The waxwork museum one. I mean, to me, it was the same person, except in one she wore a skirt and the other one she was wearing pants. It was the same over-the-top type of person that was, you know, hands everywhere and. Nah, 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 nah. And I mean, admittedly, I can, um, she actually didn't like her performance in, in Waxwork Museum. I don't know what about the Tokyo one, but yeah, and maybe Zika's right. Maybe it's just those sort of roles. She's just happened to be put in those sort of roles both times that I've happened to see her. And maybe it's a personal thing. Maybe it is a subjective thing that I just don't particularly like that sort of style of acting. Well, whether you like it or not, if yeah. there's something that's consistent, you should be able to observe it objectively. But two bits of evidence probably is a little bit unfair because it's possible that people cast her for those <coughs> characteristics she shows in everyday life. Wouldn't it's it, possible. Wouldn't it also depend on the director's intention yeah. of her performance? Sure. I mean, I think that the reason, you know, perhaps that kind of style <coughs> is 
um, intentional. The director ha perhaps wanted her to be over the top in that particular yeah. character. Yeah, but that the issue that we're really kicking around is, is the director choosing her, for example, having seen her broad behavior, said, oh, this is exactly what I want for the next role. Mm -hmm. And she was cast for the sort of thing, and she's probably going to, well, she may have been cast twice I'm for cast. it. Gary Cooper was cast in uh, 50 shows for his personal mannerisms. And it was capitalized on, and they asked him, please, don't change them. Uh, two bits of evidence is not really enough to go on. What would be interesting is to see if she has to tackle something where the character is not expected to be <coughs> quite so demonstrative, and see what she does there, and see if her personal mannerisms are creeping in there when they're not asked for. The act, the, pardon me, if the director is trying to drum up the audience's feeling in this direction, he's got to handle it in such a way that the audience feels that should be regulated to the point where he gets the impact on the audience, but no side effects that are going to be counterproductive. I mean, you can do a painting suggesting darkness. But if it's so dark that you can't see any of the features in the painting, it's a lack of proportion. It's a bad judgment. The idea of darkness is fine, but it's how you handle it. The artistic judgment, the artistic taste you use in selecting what is going to be where in what quantities is really where the art comes and goes. So sometimes you can overshoot by having too much of a good thing. It can be very true. For example, you know you can cry, and wouldn't it be wonderful at a particular... You may make that judgment, or the director may make the judgment for you. But still, everybody gets carries some of the responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. But the mere fact that you can come up with a grating voice doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be grating all the way through. Unless, for example, the director says, I want the audience to go out and argue about whether they liked the play or didn't. Then he would have produced a, an appropriate product. By a particular level for that length of time, so that at the very end, that, that power we, we, can, we can actually well, understand. Look around at the audience and check the rest of the audience. Don't check your own reactions exclusively, because after all, you're a member of a club. You can look for wheels turning where the other people are not expected to be able to see them. So don't check your own personal reaction against it, but look around as much as you possibly can and see a good average or even an enlightened person, a more discerning thought, it was overshooting, it was overkill. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how the director did it. Um sort of about the proportions I found quite stark in the beginning I found myself more um, perhaps understanding of the uh, um, of the teacher or the professor and then uh, took them towards the end the balance really really swung with quite a jolt and I thought maybe that was a, a, the intention of the director to make it as stark well have you worked out possible. the spine of the play have you worked out the spine and then its style <laughs> Once you have worked out the spine and style, then you can say whether they did what they did belongs in what they intended to do. And if it belongs, then it's good because they succeeded. weeks that we have been a part of this class. Do you think our class has been as focused as it is today? I don't think so, and you know why? <laughs> No, actually, I spent the whole time <laughs> losing the fruit. <laughs> I spent the whole time. <laughs> Keep playing your action on the audience. I spent the whole time looking at the class. It was, oh, yes, yes, you're right, Zika. Yes, you're right, Hayes. Yes, everyone's right, shaking their head. What about the keys? What the keys? There they are. <laughs> 
What I'm trying to say basically is that it, it shouldn't it shouldn't take it should not take a camera to make a class focused, I'm telling you. Should be focused all the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but there have been other occasions when we've all seen the same production. And yet what sort of input has there been? Absolutely none at all. There's 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 There'll be you like gas bagging in the corner about what you did on the weekend or who you saw or who you did this to or whatever. And Daniel in the corner farting and burping and doing all sorts of funny things. I mean, come on. It shouldn't... I'm getting tired. All right. Okay, good. Now, did he play a main line and a supplementary? Yeah, he did. Which was the main line? I don't know what you think. It's in front of you, JJ. What do you think was the main line? Which was the supplementary? I think the juggling was the main line. What makes you think so? Because everybody was more um, res respondent to the main line, to the, to the juggling, responsive. To the juggling. That was that was you responding, but. Yeah, but uh, was doing what was it. he emphasising? Well, I guess he was more focused on the on the juggling. On the juggling. Yeah. What yeah. makes you think so? Because he because was trying to get it right. He was like, you know, really. But wasn't he trying to get you right at the same time? Not, not, not no. as much as the juggling. No, no. More or less. Yeah, when he when he drops something, he seemed to be more focused on getting that <sighs> than actually continuing to play the action. His, his pausing was just all around his juggling. Like, it's right. right. Yeah. His pausing would come. Yeah. He blundered. When he was making his points to you. Yeah. How alert was he of your specific reactions until you said something I audible? A bit of bulldozer. Well, I don't think he was his really, because he was, his yeah. concentration was really no. on his juggling. No. I don't think he was. Um, I don't think he knew no. the uh, visual feedback you were giving him. No. No. It's only when you started giving him uh, words that he could hear that he was able to rebut. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Uh, well, I know that. It, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's not very. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not it's not easy sort of uh, looking for a response from from the class when you're actually juggling. So maybe it wasn't a good example. Well, it was a very challenging example. It was a good challenge. It, it would have been a beauty. If, I had four, four if you had succeeded in keeping the balance, main preoccupation there, secondary preoccupation with this. Yeah. Mm. Now, what is one of the reasons, would you say, why this uh, commanded so much of your attention? Because I'm not proficient at juggling. Are you proficient at telling these people off? Uh, I'm not too bad at it. I'm not too bad at it. Yeah. Well, does that give you a clue? From the very things you said. Um, so, sorry, so what are you saying? No, what are you saying? What did I, what what do do you I think? think? Uh, Okay, I wasn't proficient at juggling. Yeah. Right. But you're fairly proficient, proficient at, at playing that off. action. Yes. Mm. So, so why, why, why did you therefore end up <laughs> paying most of your attention to juggling? Because that was my difficult. I don't know, maybe because it requires, I mean, uh, I don't know, coordination. Concentration, more, more concentration, something like that. Well, something like that, yeah. Uh, I wonder if the rest of you get some sort of a clue as to why you can be seduced into uh, emphasizing the wrong things when you're working on stage. Because of the audience response. I mean, we were responding to the juggling more than we were responding 
to what he was saying to us. That's one thing, yeah. You're trying to compensate for something that you know that you're weak in and you want to see, you want to seem proficient in it. So therefore you put a lot of activity into The that. degree of importance. The degree of importance. Now, an actor starts out feeling the relationship on stage is the most important and the effect on the audience is secondary, secondly uh, because chances are they don't know what effect the, the audience is going to respond with. Uh, so for a while the character on stage is looking integrated, is making his comedy work and so forth and suddenly the character starts hearing laughs. Now how easy is it for the actor to swing the emphasis from the on-stage relationship to the relationship with the audience. In other words, how easy is it for the performance to go from where you are playing for the audience to a point where you are playing to the audience? How easy is it to be seduced by the audience because suddenly they become more important than the response you get from the other actor on stage? You've rehearsed with the other actor on stage, it's dull, you've played your 900th performance with them, but the audience is fresh and they're flattering you. They're telling you how funny you are. Suddenly that becomes more important than this thing over here. So you destroy your performance by playing to the house if it's a fourth wall presentation. It started out by you're pretending you didn't know the audience was there. <coughs> Now suddenly the audience is king and the show has gone up the spout. Where you place the greatest amount of importance. Right, last Tuesday, the 12th of October, there was a murder hap that happened on, uh, in Newtown, King Street, on the corner of King Street and Brown Street. Now it happened at precisely 10.04 and I know one of you has done it. So, where were you? Last, on Tuesday the 12th of October, did you go straight home or did you stick around Newtown, Jackie? I went straight home. Now where was your, did you go by car or by public transport? By car. By car, where was your car parked? I can't remember. Well, uh, whereabouts now? Was it in the main section of the street? Probably not. And this murder happened right around there. Doubt it. How can you explain yourself, Jackie? No, I don't park my car on the main street. You don't. How about you, Haim? No, I was in an alley. Usually, usually you usually like to go for coffee straight after class on that Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday. You didn't on that Tuesday home. afternoon? You went directly home? Yeah. Didn't go out anywhere else? No. Were you on your own or did you go with somebody else? Well, I walked to the car with a few people. Whereabouts was the car? In a laneway. Right, okay. Well, who did you go with? Jackie. Okay, you, so you did go with Jackie. You lied to me, Jackie. No, she walked to her car and I walked to my car. Right. But Jackie didn't remember where her car was. What? That's rather funny, don't you think, Jackie? No, not at all. All I said was it's not in the main street. In fact, I happen to believe that you may have left class a couple of minutes earlier on that, that Tuesday night. I never leave early. She left with me. Right. Let's <laughs> stand back a little bit. And now, uh, excuse me, as far as you've gone. Oh my god, I've completely forgotten my supplementary. Yeah! Oh, sorry. Well, oh, my god, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I have to start that one again. Once more into the breach. All right. Oops. All right. Yeah. Whew. All right, what about a male up here? There was a little bit forgetting. of. Um, there was a little bit of force involved in this murder. Um, JJ, you've got a strong grip. And Daniel, what happened with you straight after Tuesday? None of your business. Oh, yeah? Well, it, it is my business, actually. I'm into this investigation, so I uh, actually have to know whereabouts you went. Did you go directly home? I don't want to tell you. Well, I'm asking you. Bad luck. Okay, I can show you several badges of mine, so you're just going to have to cooperate with me. Do you go by public transport, JJ? I don't remember. Well, tell me. Try and remember. Um, I can't. <laughs> well, does anybody else remember what JJ's done? Obviously, he has little intelligence to remember, so can anybody else inform me, please? Shop. Excuse me? He was hiding behind the chicken shop. Right, now what were you doing hiding behind the chicken shop there, JJ? That's personal. 
Well, I'm making it unpersonal. So tell me. I was hungry. What did you buy? I don't remember really. Does anybody else remember what JJ bought from the chicken shop? Why did it have to be somebody out of this class? Because I'm sure it wasn't happened exactly after the class we were all in. Yeah, there's people all over the place in Newtown. So, um, how come you're um, carrying out the investigation, Devon? What could have been you? Well, because I'm in the police force, they've asked me to do, uh, do the inquiries. We know all about so the police. So just because you're in the police though. force does not mean that you cannot commit a murder. Let's leave, uh, let's leave me out of this for the time being. What about you, Daniel? Where do you want to go? Who are you, Debbie? Were you in our movement class? This is me talking to you here. You cannot investigate me after the class. Now, what about you, Daniel? Just tell me exactly where you went straight after class. Oh, what's the meal? Got an alibi. Excuse me? I've got an alibi. You haven't got an alibi at all? Yes, I have. I was with JJ's mum. She goes for it. Right, now, Daniel, just talk, tell the truth for a second, please. You're not in acting class. Well, we are acting. We are acting class. Deb, I don't think you should ask Daniel anything, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel, if you don't start answering soon, I'm going to have to take you down to headquarters, mate. Right, and somebody a lot bigger and tougher than me is going to answer to you. First, it was me, Deb. It was. Yeah. I was wearing a clown suit when I did it. I, I ran down the street, yeah. It was me. Right, now how did you kill the person? <laughs> okay. Yes, Hold it. Doesn't the supplementary have to have something completely like has nothing to do with the It's supposed to, yeah, that's right. It's got nothing to do with it. That's right. Theoretically she should be I remember childhood poem I wrote. Yes. Would you read what you managed to write really in between the either or? <laughs> Sorry. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If she put it in the batter, it will make my butter better. But a bit of better butter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's still, it's still a doggerel that she knows automatically. She, oh. It finds it relatively easy to conjure up. But even at that, how Wasn't consistently that did she keep the supplementary and main line going? But I think as she warmed into it, it like she got into a bit of a rhythm for a while there, and then once there was something really impinging happening from us, she lost it again. You know, but there was a while, there was a bit there where she was really getting into a rhythm, but it didn't last for a long time. Yeah, most of the time it was either or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jumping backwards and forwards, obviously, <laughs> one thing or the other, one thing or the other. Now there was a little while when particularly she was talking to Daniel where both of them kept going. I wonder why. Was it because she was more proficient? At that, when she was talking to Daniel, I think she wasn't listening to Daniel at that point. Uh, only half listening. Because but she he was confessed taking... and she didn't even hear it because she was, she was writing. Yeah, well, this is one of the places where you can con continue the illusion of keeping going with the supplementary actions. It's while the other person is replying. Usually is a time where you give that illusion that you're still involved. Uh, and you can listen to them with a funded ear. You register what they're saying almost unconsciously. And then you play back. Now, let's see, what was it they said? and you have a longer time in which to digest what the other person is saying. So you can contribute to the illusion that way. But at that point also, the importance got shifted because Daniel was carrying the ball and she didn't have to do much in the way of cross-examination. How easy did you find it? Not incredibly, but I started getting into more of a pattern um, and, and found it easier yeah. to, to write as somebody was talking and That's got into right. that pattern. That's right. But uh, what I thought perhaps uh, of getting around it, is it possible, I mean, am I able to, while I'm talking, just keep scribbling anything and then as somebody else starts talking, try and, and start remembering the actual poem again and writing it out? Well, Otherwise, it's yeah, extremely you can keep the illusion keep going by scribbling focus. almost anything. Yeah, you can. But unfortunately, you know, when somebody uh, who's very discerning looks at you, they'll know you're scribbling. They'll know you're scribbling. Uh, I saw a production of mm -hmm. Hamlet many, many years ago, John Gilgood, and he was very young at the time, as we all were. 
but he was scribbling a note. And he took the quill pen and he, great passion, he jammed it into the inkwell and smashed the pen. Couldn't possibly write. And he was doing this across the paper. <laughs> you know, presumably, it wasn't even a supplementary, it was a mainline action. But you could tell when the person was scribbling even without smashing the, the quill. Because things that you write bring out personal reactions. And whatever it is that you're writing will resonate so that you, your body language will practically speak that word or speak the idea that the word is contained with. Mm. Yeah, so you can keep the illusion going by scribbling gently and then scribbling a little bit more uh, strictly as you go on. There is such a fine line, though, that that's of obviously... Of course it is. You know, of course. Practice. You realize how the mind has to jump backwards and forwards between him and you. The average person takes about a half a second to jump from one to the other, to the other. Mm. We've got to cultivate that fifth of a second to be able to make a value judgment in a fifth of a second. Now, a fifth of a second is pretty fast. You start the pen going and it coasts for that fifth of a second while you go on to the next person and then come back to the pen. And a fifth of a second later, you're, you're going backwards and forwards like a machine gun. Mm. And really, strictly speaking, the mind can't be performing two separate activities exactly at the same time. You just give the illusion. And a good illusionist will, will carry it off. But you were beginning to get it. Yeah. But at the beginning, she didn't do any at all. Right. I don't know if this is right, but He's building his alibis. That's not alibi. Have a go. Last night, um, I don't want you to repeat this, all right? Last night, I couldn't sleep. So you can't sp speak either, can I? Oh, croaky voice. Last night, I couldn't sleep, so about... You can't repeat this, all right, please. Um, about 2 o'clock, I got up. I watched TV while I was bored, so... You know, I thought I'd go for a drive. Anyway, I ended up in the cross. Anyway, I saw this, um, I saw this prostitute, right? But I knew she was a prostitute because she was a woman, and all women are prostitutes, because they're all hookers. So anyway, um, you know, she was, she was there, you know, being a slut because she's a woman. Anyway, so we went for a walk down the street. She goes, what, 50 bucks? I said, I said, oh, yeah, 40 bucks, you know, because all, all women are cheap. You know, she said, you know, okay, 40 bucks is cool. Anyway, so we went up to a room. What do you mean all women are cheap? I'm, I'm not talking to you, baby, all right? But I'm a woman. Yeah, no, that's not you the just point. Told me if, I'm if you listen to what I just said, okay, I said I wasn't talking to you. Anyway, I went up to a room, okay, anyway, so she walked into the kitchen, right, where she belonged. Anyway, she was in there and, um, you know, she started doing some women's stuff, you know, washing up. So she was there and, and uh, yeah, she was washing up. Anyway, so she was, she was in the kitchen, you know, and she said she was cold, so she walked over the fireplace. She got down on her knees where women belong. And she lit the fire, you know, and uh, she started complaining so it was cold. Anyway, I was getting bored, you know, because, you know, I was just getting bored. She wasn't doing what women should do, is please men. Anyway, so I fucked her, then I went home. That was it. Did he play a main line in a supplementary? Yeah. Yeah. Did the dude named Pinjola? He didn't? Yeah, he did. What do you think his main line was? To tell a story. To which? Well, whoa, 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 I think, to, to say that we, we were cheap, I think confide became the um, supplementary. Yeah, and he's insulting. I think he's insulting. Yeah, I think the main line was to insult. Yeah. I think what he started out to do, I think, was to big note. To gloat. Or to gloat. 
Yeah, and the supplementary was? Not to put women down. Put women down. Or to, no, to provoke you. To provoke you. He's supplementary. Yeah? Because it's very I was hoping getting a few supplementaries out, but I was hoping to insult, shock, and provoke. Yeah. Shock, hardly. Sure. But what, <laughs> what did you intend your main line to be? Oh, I got it wrong. I realised in the end I was gliding because that's what we did on Tuesday night. One of the girls did, um, Jackie was doing about a husband and it turned out she was gliding, but it was meant to be you know, confide or, or, t- or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah. It, we knew, by the way, that the intended supplementary had slipped over and became a main line. Yeah. How did you know? Because everybody was missing out for those things and they responded to. Not no, only that. No. He focused what did he great... do? Not what did you do, but what did he do? He wasn't getting enough response from us, so he thought he'd bring it into it more. More? How he overstated it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a woman should do, or what a woman is expected to do, yeah, or where she belongs. Flog, flog, flog. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> if you're going to do a supplementary, keep it the other side of the main line. Keep it subtler. No, you, you came on with a sledgehammer. Why? Why was he seduced into playing the so-called supplementary as a main line? Because that's where the audience response yeah. went to. Yeah, it suddenly yeah. became more important. He was getting a real rise out of you <laughs> with that particular objective. After all, what would the objective be? of big noting or confiding. What would the objective be? To get Rob's conscience. What? To get it off his conscience. To impress. To get, his, yeah, get to it off his conscience. But what could he see in you? How important was it to realize that kind of objective? Well, obviously not as important as it was to... No, obviously not as important as to see you squirm. Mm. Yeah. So it was a clever idea. It's a good idea to play both actions on you. But <laughs> you started giving him the biggest responses on the supplementary, so he became seduced and started flogging that one, and the main line went nowhere. You might throw it more like, say, um, I'm married, so you've got to promise you won't repeat it. And, and but, act more on the confiding side of it. Would yes, but what is in th- it for them. How important is it for them to receive your confiding, your confidences? How important is that? I understand. It's not very important. No. No. You see, searching for the objective... Nobody. And you wanted to make them feel as though they missed out on something? Mm. All right, so I took my supplementary as my main line um, to provoke. And then I took as a supplementary then to deride women. I see. Well, this is what you actually did. Is this what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's basically what I wanted to do. So I, I wanted see. to provoke them at the same time, confide, but my supplementary was be to deride women. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've got three things going Yeah, there. I was hoping to get insult, shock, deride, provoke, and maybe confide. All right. So which parcel of things is your main line? Which... Which is your main line? It was either to be to confide or um, to provoke. I was hedging well, which, on which I was hedging my bed, to, actually. Huh? I was hedging my bets, but I'll go with provoke, and, but the actual supplementary was to deride women. Provoke? No. Uh, it's the same, thing. same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Because one is the objective of the other. Mm-hmm. Right. Deride women so that they would be provoked. Mm-hmm. That's the payoff. So then you weren't playing a supplementary in a mainline. Yeah. But as I, I said, it was either confide or provoke. So I, was hedge, I was basically just trying to hedge my bets. You're hedging your bets. Yeah. Now you're hedging your bets some more. Some more. Now, just be... One of them has got to be the part of the through line of the spine. That one has got to be the main line. The other one has got to be the supplementary. Now, if you slip backwards and forwards, you shoot to the play. Every character in the play contributes something to the spine of the play, and every character contributes something to their own spine. Now, in plotting the spine, 
It's made of step by step by step by step bits. Now all of these bits have got to be cohesive. They've got to connect. Now the supplementary don't have to connect. If they slip sloppily from one to another, you can destroy the character. It would be the same as if you find yourself getting laughter from the audience or getting a hand from the audience to stop in the middle of the play and take a bow or to wound back at the audience. If you had said your main line was to big note or your supplementary was to derive. Well, that wasn't actually my supplementary. Guys, I really must confess that um, I've been stealing from all of you and um, I've stolen quite a few things, and, and that includes a lot of money, okay? So it's from all of you. So I'm really sorry. I just thought I'd let you know. Um, well, I've been stealing money from you, and um, there's quite a bit of uh, money missing out of your wallet. I'm sure if you have a look, you'll, find, you'll notice. And um, Give her a hard time. And, I mean, as for Tori, well, I live with you, Tori, but I've been stealing from you too. And I know it, Beth. Oh, well, good. That I wasn't going to say anything, but I have noticed. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. I mean, well, you I'm know. I'm glad you've relieved your conscience. Yeah, is I have. Is that the purpose of this, so you feel better? Yes, it is. And I, I really do feel so much better now for, for explaining well, it to you. I'm glad you feel better. Oh, that's good. That's fantastic. Well, it's and not fantastic because you've stolen from me and you're just trying to make yourself feel better. I think you should be feeling bad. Yes, but believe me, I'm going to give it all back to you, okay? But I, but I just feel better now that I've sp spoken to you. I'm not losing sleep over it. Um, and I, I really, honestly, I feel so well, much I'm better. I'm so glad you feel better, seeing as you've been stealing from all of us. Well, I do. I mean, I've got, you know, see, the, it's just that when I was, I've been carrying this around me for years. Yeah, you know, do you when feel I, any shame? Yeah, I do. I feel so much shame. I mean, when I was younger, you know, I used to... Um, I, I was always shoplifting and stealing things and I stole from my parents, I stole from my sister and I just stole from everybody and, and I stole at school, you know, I used to steal things out of people's pencil cases, sharpeners and things like that and now I just feel so much better because I've been stealing off all you guys too, it's like the habit hasn't worn off and you know, I just, I just wanted to let you guys know and anything I've taken off you, you know, I will, I'll return it to you, I How guarantee. How do you know what you've taken? Well, um, sometimes you don't miss things, okay? But if you've ever missed a little bit of money here and there, I usually do it so you don't notice, you know? Um, but so how do we know you're going to stop stealing? Well, because I'm, I'm telling you this now, and you won't know that I'm going to stop stealing, but you have my personal guarantee. If that's not enough, I'm really sorry, but... No, I'm going to get some help or something like that, and why? Well, you should yeah, get some help. You probably just get some help. Well, that's exactly right, and that's why I told You're you guys, because you guys are special to me, yeah. and I wanted to make sure that I could, I could tell somebody, and I thought you guys might help me by, you know, just, just being there for me and understanding. Why should we help you when you've stolen yeah, from us? Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, I, I'm not going to do it anymore. You well, know? how do we know that? that? How do we know that? I mean, if you've got a problem and you're not in therapy about it, well, I will. Okay, I mean, as far as she's got. <laughs> what was her main line action? To confess. Confess. What objective would she be working toward? To Therefore. To forgive her. Forgiveness. What okay. feedback would she expect from you? Um, I, I would say something, you know, forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. Auditory forgiveness. Or, or, an or punishment, perhaps. What were you going for? I was going for them to say, "All right, well, you know, even even if even if they were to give me a hard time, it would have been all right. It was just to get it off my conscience." But what would the objective be? That oh. it's off your conscience, and therefore you find the objective in yourself, or do you find it from them? Well, the. It's off my conscience, but of their response, I wanted them to say, "All right, well, you know, thanks for being honest with with us. Um, you know, we'll." In other words, they're the ones who are going to absolve your conscience. Well, yes, yes. Yeah. So you'd have to go for absolution. That's your objective. Absolution. You didn't bring your thesaurus with you. No, I've been borrowing. I stole Hyams. You stole another one. <laughs> All right. Uh, her supplementary was what? I want to know what you're reading. reading. reading oh, now let's man, let's find was, out. Yes, let's find hard, out what you know? she read. 
Um, don't do you, look now. Don't do you want me to read you what I read, or do you want me to tell you about what I tell read? Us, tell us what you read. Well, no, give, give, the script, give the book to somebody else so they can check okay, you out. Okay, I, I read um, this part here, and just the top part of this part here. It wasn't very much. And what did you read? What I was reading was um, about, this is something that Justin just gave me, is this um, Australian being, they're saying that melanomas are a big thing in Australia now, so they're telling you, they're trying, they're doing research about it, and... Um, uh, <laughs> um, what else are they doing? <laughs> not much else. Um, Two pages some, worth of not much else. No, eh? one to be. But there's some kind of pharmaceutical thing coming out now, or something like that. <laughs> you mean after all that time, that's as much as you got out of it? I was. I got words and bits and pieces, but they didn't really make much sense together. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah. All right, you picked a tough one. That's yeah. a good one. But a good <laughs> one. <laughs> That's a good one. A very good one, but it's a tough one. They're supplying these to get pharmacies. It's just new pills that are. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's I'm not. I really love him, and I can't. I'm not in. As far as I'm concerned, I'm in no danger whatsoever. Be very careful, Rebecca. Why? You know, he's my boyfriend. But he doesn't talk too much about the other things he does. Mm. Well, we broke up a couple of times, but, you know, one year now. Well, I saw a newspaper article, an old, in, in the library archives. I was in there doing some research for my work, and I saw something about ten years old with his name involved with graft corruption and drugs and his brothel. Yeah, but, but what has that got to do with me, Barra? I'm the one who's going out with him. I love him. Why, why should his brothel have anything to do with me? Well, it means he's been in jail, Rebecca. So what? I mean, I still love him. He's, he's, he's still what I want. He's, not, he's, he's out of jail now. He's not into all that stuff right now. Yeah, but if he's running a club and doing a bit of uh, pimping... Kept two things going at once, as opposed to stop, start, or either or. Yeah. Did she stop writing all the time when she was arguing, or did some of it keep going? I think it has been not, yeah. for, not for very long. Just to say that when she got more, the argument got a little bit more heated, that's when she'd stop, when she'd start. And then when she was really pushing the point home, that's when she'd stop and use that hand. Yeah. The speed of her writing was up fast when she wasn't talking. That's her speed, mm. like her speed would drop down a lot when she started talking. Well, that's where I thought you meant to actually be listening, to, um, and actually thinking ahead what you're going to write so you can say it while you're talking. Right. She actually picked up the pace. Right. The pace. That was a giveaway, but mm. that wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't bad. Alex, I have to show you my latest. I didn't, did I? Um, don't you love it? My boyfriend got it for me yesterday. I think most people would die for a ring like that, don't you? Oh, God, it's interesting. Wow. God. I mean, it screams for attention, doesn't it? It'd look, it'd look vile on someone else, but on you, Ruler. Oh, it's definitely a you ring. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes, everyone says that. Mm. Actually, um... We found, you know how I was telling you about the house we were looking for? Well, we found our perfect house. It's in Vaucluse, it's three bedrooms, and there's a pool in the backyard where I can train. And it's got a great view. Oh, and it reminds me of our house in Santorini, actually. That's great! I mean, now you own well, two houses that, that are legally half yours. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know they could be, couldn't they? Mm -hmm. Actually, um... We'll probably go to Santorini this summer and spend some quality time there with Michael. You know the house. I've shown you photos, haven't I? Mm, Told you you mm, can come if, mm. if you ever get your airfare together. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've just got school to do, but... I mean, you, you're so lucky. You, you go overseas twice a year. You've got so much time to just spend money on yourself. Mm, yeah. yeah. Thanks to Michael. Mm, well, I must say something. I mean, you're so lucky you've met Michael Ruler. 
wanted to say this to you. You're so lucky you've met him because he's really given you a purpose in life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know how to pick them, don't I? Oh, well, Michael, he's, he's so interesting. He's so full of... of life. You compliment each other so well. Mm. Actually, speaking of compliments, he, um, he rings me up all the time and tells me that I'm beautiful and all that. He's always complimenting oh. me. Wouldn't you just love that kind of attention? Well, after all your cosmetic surgery, and I'll, I must say, it's done wonders. I mean, you're so full of life now. You're so confident. Mm. Yes, I guess it's a luxury that most people can't really ever have or dream of, but yeah, Michael took care of that too. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, what did they do? What were their main line actions and what were their supplementaries? The rules was to big no, boast, to boast. And the supplementary was to put down. To put her up facing it. Ah. Ah. All right. When they're playing, when they're playing tightly, it's a little bit difficult to put the knife in between and see exactly which is which, and yet it's there. The one large question we're going to have to ask is, were there main lines in conflict? What were their main lines? Well, their main lines weren't actually in conflict. What were they? Well, Xander was to flatter, wasn't it, the main line? Was it? Yeah. What was your main what? line? What were your main lines, kids? Well, mine was to brag. Brag? And yours? Mine was to compliment, like to make a... Where's feel the conflict between mm. brag and compliment? Yeah, I think our conflict was in the supplementaries. Yeah. The conflict was in the supplementary, exactly. The conflict was in their supplementaries, not their main lines? Yes. But if yes. The main line was brag and the supplementary was glow, aren't they too, too parallel? No. No. No, bitch. To bitch. To undermine. Make her jealous. Yes. Jealous, isn't that um, an objective rather than an action? No, it, well, it can be both. Okay. Some actions are by name of objective. You know, to make you laugh is an action as well as an objective. So what would be the, the objective of the action to make someone laugh? To humour. To make them laugh. Be laugh. So laugh the objective the, and the action can be the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, in other words, the path and the, the goal are the same thing. But in her case, or in their case, what they've demonstrated actually is way, the way actors can very frequently compensate for bad writing. If, for example, the author has given you a pair of actions that don't conflict, and you still want to keep conflict in the scene, you can make a supplementary conflict, conflict. with a main line. Remember when you were playing backtracking actions? Mm. Backtracking yeah. actions themselves don't conflict, they resolve. Well, there's no dramatic interest in a resolution, except at the end of the play, where every, everybody lives happily ever after. But in the middle of a play, when you are building conflict, agreement destroys the drama. So where do you get conflict? You'll have to use one of the other devices You'll have to use either a feeling to create conflict with the other person, or an adjustment, or a supplementary action. And the supplementary action can battle your gloating. She undermines the gloating with the supplementary. So that is a way of solving that problem, but it's not the way of solving today's problem, which is make sure that your main lines conflict. Yeah? All right. She made a supplementary main line.
today. You know, Kath, you, you're just so beautiful. Everyone just thinks you're so beautiful. and It'd be great to be like you, you know, to have beautiful blue eyes and blonde hair. And I just, I think you're so lucky. Oh, Kate, there's lots more attractive people. Nothing. God, I'd... I've got blonde hair. I'd much rather have brown hair. Oh, but it's such beautiful blonde hair, you know. I'd love to have beautiful hair like that. And it's straight, you know, it's not curly. And, and you've got beautiful clothes. I'd love to offer as well. You know, and you've got a beautiful house and a nice car. And I just think you're so lucky. Kate, you've got a lot to offer. I don't know what you're going on about. It's nothing. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but not as great as you. Oh, Kate, don't be silly. No, you are. You, you've got beautiful fair skin and you're tall and you're thin and... I leave skin's much better. I'd much rather be short as well. Short people are more petite. No, 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 no. It's much better to be nice and tall like you. You look elegant and you're just so lucky. Elegant? I wouldn't say I'm elegant. <laughs> oh, I would. Moment. You've got long, thin fingers and you just always look so good. No, Jane. You don't look good at all. I think you do. <laughs> Can we stop? Sorry. All right. <laughs> I don't want, oh, she's going to look like a doll. <laughs> well, let's see what uh. you've done to her. <laughs> let's not. <laughs> Can I have a mirror, please? All right. Now, what do you think the main lines of the supplementaries were? The main line of... Catherine's was to, to flatter, I guess. Kate was to Kate flatter, was Catherine Kate. was to oh, minimize. Oh, Kate to flatter. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kate was um, flattering Catherine's while... supplementary was to put makeup on... Um, to which? Catherine's supplementary was to put makeup on Kate, and Kate's Kate Kate supplementary was to fish for compliments. compliments. To which? Fish for compliments. Fish for compliment. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that right? Is that what you were doing? Yeah. Now. How difficult is putting makeup on? <laughs> is it automatic? No, not putting it on Kate because it wasn't my makeup either. It was the rulers. Makeup. Okay. Uh, it really would have been interesting if, for example, you had deliberately put makeup on her to uglify her. <laughs> well, she did <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't hard. Uh, don't kick yourself. You're a very pretty girl. If you deliberately, with demurring, at the same time had to go into the kind of details it would take to make her look as plain as possible. Then it would yeah. require steering. Mm, then yeah. it would, requ would require something that is just not automatic to you. Yeah. You know how to put makeup on almost by second nature. <coughs> on another person, I know, it's, I know that it's, it's a bit more difficult, but how much more difficult is it to put it on when you're looking in the mirror because, again, you're molding a face. I don't think it's that terribly difficult. Oh, it is. It is. It really is. Would that you be surprised to know that I have put makeup on? I used to wear makeup, you know, for a living. Yeah, yes, but yes, I know. It's much more difficult. I don't know whether it's much more difficult. I don't think it's that much more. It is? You yeah. find it that much more? I find it really easy to put it on me. It takes me like two minutes, yeah. but on someone else, they, they keep blinking or my hand starts shaking or... Lots of things can go wrong. Really? What would be hard is putting it on without a mirror. Mm. Put, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be much Did harder? Did you find putting makeup oh, yeah. on difficult? On okay. Kate? Yeah. Mm. You did? Oh, in that case, I'd backtrack. So I, I don't put makeup. I, I can't put makeup on people. I'm terrible. <laughs> oh, all right. In that case, I take it back. If it required steering and judgment, and your mind was occupied or had to be occupied in the process, mm. then it would be an action. Yeah, all right. That was it. You did it. Fine. And they kept the balance, too, by the way. Oh, fine, Dr. Lloyd! Dr. Lloyd! We were, honestly. They were just watching. Leave me alone! All right. All right. Main lines and supplementaries, what were they? <clears throat> oh.
I do everything around this house, mate. I do the dishes, I do the vacuuming. You do nothing. You're lazy. You're hopeless. Oh. You're so good at doing all that stuff. That's... Uh, I'm not... That sort of attitude, mate, is typical of you. I would never think like that. I always think of positive things and think of what I can do for people. You always think what you can't do. You're hopeless. Do you get, I mean, you get so caught up in the way the house looks. I mean, who gives a shit? There's such a bad attitude. I mean, don't you ever think about, well, think the way I do anyway, think what you can do for people, what you can do for other people, you know? Like, ugh, you're so selfish. So what's wrong with that? I'm doing, I'm, doing what, um, I'm doing what's good for me. That's exactly it, mate. That's such a bad attitude. You can't think like that. You've got to think more like, what I can do for people. What, like, have you, do you ever watch what I do around this place? Do you ever, do you ever think, gee, it just does a lot for me, you know? I, I, I am good. You, you're hopelessly, oh, you're lazy, mate. But what, what difference does it make? It makes a big difference. It makes a hell of a difference, mate. It makes... Because I'm good and you're, you're not doing anything. Do you have any right? potatoes? Do you have any potatoes? That's the end of the thing. Okay. <laughs> that was a quickie. Okay, what were their main lines? To criticise with justice. To, to criticise and to justify? No, he's praising himself at the same time. Though. Which, which? Yeah, oh, sorry. Main yeah, lines, main lines first. Was I thought um, the main line of um, Cairns was to minimise. To minimise, and the other was to criticise. Yeah. Right? Is that what they were, kids? Sorry. Criticise and minimise. Um, or justify. His no, minimise. Mine was minimise. And but yours was to. Actually, originally to boast, but I know it's easy to criticise. I found. What was your main line supposed to be? Um, to big note, to, to make to myself to say I do everything. I'm great. I, I'm on. Oh, to big note yourself. Yeah. Is that your main line? Yeah, and I, it overcame. Either. What objective would you expect from a main line like that? Um, well, first of all, to make him realise that I'm necessary. How would house. you know it? Um, because you'd actually, I was looking for a, um, an answer where you'd say, um, "Hey, you, yeah, actually, I'm sorry, you do do a lot," or you know, ah. recognition that I actually do right. a lot of things around the house. Okay, some verbal acknowledgement. Yeah. Okay. And what was your supplementary going to be? Um, to criticise, to put him down, and make, yeah. Ah, right. So, I just so he's going for big note and criticize. Big note is a dominant and criticize is a supplementary. Mm. A tough combination because one can slop over into the other so easily. Mm. Depending on the kind of feedback you get, it's easy to slip off the road. Yeah. Mm. Well, you have to do some juggling with that one. Uh, as for the writing, what did you write? Well, I was, I was doing a shopping list because I was hoping that at, at some stage I could... Because he was, he was going to be sort of saying how much more he does around the house and, and I was saying, who cares? And, and then I was expecting that um, from time to time I could slip in, uh, well, do we have this and do we have that? And then finally, um, but, you know, I've, in here I've written a shopping list for you to go out and buy the stuff. So it was... All right. We okay. Didn't, we didn't really get far enough down the track. All right. Track so, that. how far on the shopping list did you get? Well, I've got um, milk, bread, butter, sugar, cocoa pops, tea bags, and I had written potatoes. potatoes. But, but I, I, I mean, I admit, I, I was, I, it's, I was sort of trying to maintain that balance of because this was supposed to be my supplementary, and I and I didn't feel like I was giving enough to my main line. Um, and then when I did that, then I realised that. You know, that I took my eyes yes. off the page, I wasn't writing my shopping list. That's right. So. The qualitative problem and the quantitative problem. Knowing what needs to be done and keep straight on that particular course requires concentration. And knowing how much has to be done to retain one as dominant and the other one as a supplementary requires concentration. The mind's got to be like a machine gun. Okay, speaking of machine guns, here is Zika. <laughs> Garbage. I started thinking about garbage. I mean, what are we going to do with all of it? You remember when that, that barge floated in and it was covered with all this garbage and no one would take it? 
You remember that? Well, what are we going to do with all of it? That's what I'd really like to know. <laughs> but I didn't know what started thinking about garbage. Um, the other night, John was taking out the garbage, and he kept spilling it. And I, I started imagining this container that was like overflowing just by itself, and this garbage kept coming up and spilling out everywhere. And, well, what would we do if that happened? I mean, I just want to know what's going to happen with all the garbage. That's, that's what I really, really want to know. That does it. All right, fine. We're just going to try to do it around here. Well, we didn't get you yet. Uh, if, maybe you could. This is called the naughty. Can you repeat the last section? Or something? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And I started imagining this, this container that just kept filling and spilling and all this garbage falling out everywhere. I mean, what would you do if something like that actually happened? I just want to know what would happen to all the garbage. I, I really want to know. <laughs> all right. Now, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I mean, it's really, it needs to be broken up, I think, into bits. Like, it's why I can't hear you. I think it needs to be broken up into, you know, like... Well, I don't think there was a clear enough supplementary yeah. of, of that she wasn't just talking about garbage. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. Did there need to be? Well, no, it doesn't need yeah, to be. Yeah, if it's the first scene in but, the yeah. play, you'd want to you'd know... Want to, you want to be... How much do you have to know in the first scene? Isn't that sort of setting up what's going to happen? Could later it be on? intriguing the audience to want to find out? Yeah. Does everything have to be self explanatory at the beginning? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that it should be like out to for everyone Spelled to out. see. But still in the same token, it can't come out of nowhere either, can it? Feel Why not? Because then it has no continuity. Yeah, then the audience goes, huh? The audience are just going continuity is not necessarily a straight line. True, okay. But shouldn't there be shouldn't hints be or glimpses of it? Maybe it's planted, and maybe the revelation comes a little later. Remember? Planting, yeah, pointing up, I mean, and then pay off. Well, if everything pays off at the beginning, there may be no need for the, for the play. So it's possible the planting can be enigmatic. On the same token, though, she did seem to sort of um, not really wait for reasons to go on, which in itself was a bit of a giveaway. Ah, that's something else. She wasn't. That's something else. Really. What were you looking for in him? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for him signs that he's quite happy to have this chat with me. Sort of, I'm trying to make like a a nice normal conversation over tea that's nothing heavy at all and I is, want him... Sure. Is he happy about that? No, not at all. What does he really want to talk about? Um, my problem with my husband. What do you say that successfully distracts him and what of these things keeps him from being distracted so you have to work all the harder to distract him again? One thing, I slip up when I'm Re make the relationship between the garbage and John and I say that he he actually triggered my thought about garbage was the fact that my husband kept spilling garbage out and when I say that when I tell my psychiatrist that I suddenly panic and think oh god I, I know I've made the connection and I know he's going to want me to start talking about my husband so I try to ravel on more and more about what, what would happen if this this thing that would never possibly happen if this rubbish bin started overflowing with garbage everywhere and how successful were you with distracting him not with that? Not very successful. Why all. not? Because he, the next thing he says to me is, how things with your husband? So I can tell by the, like, Seb sort of starts looking towards me and I, he goes, and I just know that he's about to start, he's going to bring it back to John. 
Do you uh, read his dialogue as well? I mean, like a telephone conversation. Are you hearing what he's not saying? Yeah, I, I think I do. Okay. Anne is very right. aware of, much more so aware of her problems than I think she wants to be. Now, should we have seen that though? Mm. How, much, how much do you see precisely of what she's thinking? Or do you see enough of the kinds of pauses or the kinds of reactions which later on you'll say, oh, this is why she reacted that way. In other words, is she planting that kind of set of reactions at the beginning? Yeah. Because that could be enough. Yeah, she was doing that. It could be enough. The kind of squirming she is doing yeah. when she's not succeeding in doing what she wants to do. Yeah. That may be enough for the scene. Now, of course, to say that what she's doing now is all self-contained and so forth, we would have to see the rest of the play to see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But by itself, it looks as though it's a nice bit which, if you had walked in on people talking this way, I don't think you would have been tempted to say, oh, they're doing an acting scene. No, I think you might be inclined to say, there's a little confessional, a, a little bit of socializing or manipulating going on here. I think, I think. I think she was measuring him moment by moment to see what needed to be done. I guess that's sort of dangerous in a way too, isn't it? Because she has to measure herself carefully. Yes, so some certainly. of your attention needs well, to be on yourself. Ah, but in passing, of course, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with actions played on yourself if A, it belongs, mm -hmm. and B, you don't linger unnecessarily. Yeah. So long as you don't look as though you're listening to yourself or glancing at yourself in the mirror, but there are times when, for example, in doing things to other people, you have to stop and examine your own vocabulary to see if you can find a word that will really succinctly do what you have to do. So at that moment, you're playing on yourself. You cut off from them as if to say, no, wait a minute, I'm going to find a word. The word is uh, hypotenuse. You finally found it. So in moments like that, you are playing on yourself. But even there, the object of your action is your key motivator. Even there, the basic reason I've gone to myself, into myself, is because you need a word which crystallizes the idea for you best. So hang on a minute, I'll find the word. Um, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So I think what she was doing could be quite plausible within a scene. I don't know what the problem is. You feel it because you borrowed it from a film. That's unlike it. The whole thing is going to be very chatty. But the small sampling we've seen That's is right. all you really need, even on a large stage. Yeah. Good. Then I'm good. Yeah. There's enough activity going on there. There's enough happening going on so that we could focus in on that and not be distracted by the rest of the stage. Unless Somebody over there is catching flies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how well do you know the scene, Camilla? Are you in it? No. No, I just buy uh, him. How, just to what extent was she getting through to you? Yeah, she was sizing me up, checking me out, you know. Really, I think that's all that scene could yeah. needs, really. Do you know. <laughs> I thought you were worried about <coughs> something that wasn't powerful enough that needed uh, expanding or stretching. But this doesn't. Oh, good. I feel like it, it does. I'm worried yeah. that it's gonna, everyone's going to be asleep because it's just going to be this very minimal yeah. It's kind of like TV. A, a television, yeah. It's sex lies and videotape. We're putting that on. Huh? Making it. Yeah. Stage trying. Yeah, well, it's worked on the stage. A lot of kids have used these scenes for graduation. Yeah. Well, it's dynamic enough. Yeah. Sure. Does that work? We need to be like on the sides, on two different sides. Is that like? Yeah. 
Oh, the chart on yours. You're on my side. Oops, sorry. Oh, great. <coughs> okay, we've just have introduced ourselves and I guess we'll just start. <coughs> well, as you know, um, my client has been written out of the will for uh, next to nothing and basically we're here to try and um, ascertain whether your client's I, willing to uh, I do perhaps think that maybe we could settle this on our own Lizzie I don't I don't know if we need all this I don't want it to be all of this and what exactly do you mean by settle it on our own can't we do it fairly I think what my client's trying to say is that she feels that uh, what has happened here has been unjust to her and that maybe uh, your mother wasn't in a correct frame of mind my when she made willing, that last will and... Uh, my, my client is willing to offer 20% of the estate. At the most. How can you insult me like that, Elizabeth? <laughs> Would you ask if, if you'd like these proceedings No, well, 20% isn't we comments. consider you, a fair a fair and just compromise. Um, as you know, my client was taken out of the family home about four years ago against her will. Well, there were uh, very, very, no, very good reasons As far as I'm concerned, no they weren't on they weren't what has happened will. today and um, there could have been a bit of manipulation, I think, as my client has put it to me that uh, possibly... Uh, Sorry, we're not manipulation? You never let me get hold of Mum once. Not once did you let me she speak to Mum. Actually, Would want you to ask talk your to client you not to you speak left. to my client Why directly? Please, 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 don't please. speak to my client Why directly. Why don't you do it to me? It's okay. Just leave it to me. All right? What? Just leave it to Look, me. I don't That's exactly want them for. to have anything. Well, it's not a matter of having anything. I mean, we will take this as far as we have to take this if we can't come to a compromise You've today. got nowhere to take it with. Well, We're taking we it do court. have... Olivia, You've got we do have... Um, we do have evidence that Olivia did try and contact her mother on numerous occasions Whether, and that she wasn't allowed to speak Whether, to her mother. No, we no, do no. have we do have evidence to suggest well, that um, you're... Could you please that, explain to my sister and to oh, her solicitor that we will be taking it to court and that I am entitled to half a share of it. Please. No, how, excuse me. Let how, me explain this. Look, look, let me do my job, all right? Yes, your excuse mother me, died, your, your mother died me. with a will. That's all right, right, but she was not. Your sister is very kindly, very generously offering you 20% of something you have no entitlement to. You left and the that home. That is not correct. Your client left the home four years ago mm -hmm. of her own free will. In, went me. into a venture that her mother did not approve of. There are quite a substantial mother, reasons for why that she was cut out of the will. Ask you your client, please, not to I direct any to questions through. No, I can't even do it. Her. No, just do it. Well, could you me. please explain to her that there's a very, very good, large likelihood this could reflect against my religion as discrimination. And could you please explain to them that the fact that she did leave me to look after my mother for such a really long period of time when she was just deteriorating does not really entitle her any, to any of the money that I got? Yes, and what we could also explain to her for a second was that it was her choice she ever made And she herself did tell me that I would exacerbate my mother's condition. You're a grown woman, miss. You have, any, you have every... Excuse me. To approach your mother if necessary. My client tells me that uh, that her mother told her that the only reason that she threw her out was because she had joined a certain religion. Now that is grounds for discrimination, as we see it. And it was it's her not mother. grounds for discrimination. If that her mother fact wishes, that she wrote her out of the will after five years. That's not discrimination. That's her personal, personal choice. Against, exactly. Against, if you want to take such religion. a lame. Um, Claim to court, we, we'll relish it. What well, about our okay. You'll get nothing. You'll get nothing. Well. You'll get nothing. Now, if you're willing to settle, right, twenty percent, which is and all you're going to get, prove, Elizabeth knows that's unfair. And no. if we can prove that uh, the mother was unstable at the time of death, that she had been seeing There's a psychiatrist no for two that. years. And uh, and that she was taking medication. Well, for, maybe if Olivia was around, she wouldn't have gone to a psychiatrist. a pretty good case, and I think you'd better ask your client. Maria, Maria. Maria, why don't you ask me? At this I don't point, why Elizabeth keeps 
turning up this thing about how this is I ridiculous. Why can't we just I'm talk one on one? Why do we have to have all this? Because you've engaged us. If you two okay. want to sort okay. it out, don't okay. engage this us. All right, and just let me take care of it. I'll take you in a bit. We're not willing to settle for anything else. Twenty percent is our offer. If you wish to take us to court, you don't have a leg to stand on. We call <laughs> your bluff. Let's go to court. Good. We'll go to court. See you in court. Yep. Thank you for your time. Thank you. See you there. No, you call that a force thing? No. no. It didn't work. No, I like there were a couple of moments where there was a force theme when you were relating to each of them, but it didn't necessarily mean that while you were concentrating on one you also kept some of the others in suspense. Mm -hmm. You tended, well, to start with, to work as a gang to two scene, mm -hmm. yeah. one team against yeah. the other. Yeah. So that's a gang two scene. Yeah. If you like, a gang four scene, but it's still ganged. Uh, I found it hard because there was we Maria, talk to each other. We realized that we to Yeah, we had to talk to Well, that's, <laughs> a, that's a hell of a... <laughs> A hell of a link between the two sisters in that case. Your action is to ignore each other? You walk in with Carmela. Okay. No, this is like the stuff table, okay? You know how mm -hmm. semi formals they eat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, you know, sorry. <laughs> okay. Don't come in here, Andrews. Alright, stand by. Guys, can you come in from the other entrance so we can see so you coming in? <laughs> so I suppose I'll have to go back on duty outside soon. Oh, I can do it. I'll do it. It's fine. Oh, no, really. I, it's, up, it's up to me. It's no, really, my no, shift. No, you did it last time. I don't mind doing a double shift. It's fine. Really, I can do it. Well, look, why don't you help me? We can go down together and I'll, I'll go that way and you can go the other okay. way. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Hi. 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 So how's it Hi. been? Fine. The kids yeah. have all been fine. Great. Where, where have you been? We've missed you. Oh, we were just supervising the children outside. Um, you know, caught a few smokers. Uh, <laughs> little devils. Yeah. And how, how are you? Good. That's good. I think the question here is, how are you, Carmel? Oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just fine. Yeah. I don't believe it. It was your turn to supervise, wasn't it? I... Well, Carmelo wanted to come out and, um, and give me a hand. I don't so... believe I was talking to you, was I? No. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so, so why did you go out, Silvana? Well, it was uh, Carmelo's turn. No, 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 you misunderstand. You said it was my turn, but he thought he'd come and give me a hand. Oh. So, um, yes, we went Just out... Just what and... sort of a hand would that be, Silvana? A very good hand, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have anything to say for yourself at all? Well, so she needed a lot of help and, oh. and I was just helping her. Mm. You know. You just helping yeah. her? He really helped me. Well, as I was just saying to Stephanie, yes. it's my turn, so how about you come <laughs> help me? Well, I've... Oh, no, okay. she wants me to do it. I don't mind doing no, it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think Carmelo wants to stay, stay here, don't you? You know, it's I dark mean, out there. there. You, these little... little duty here. Well, Boys, you don't know what they could be up to, and I'd feel a lot safer if I had a nice big man with yes, you. Yes, actually, M Mr. Hines is over there. You could just grab oh. him. I'm, I'm sure he'd love to go. Why don't we He's all go? Well, we have Carmelo right here. That's don't right. Yeah. So you should stay here, Carmelo. Well, you know, I, I, I was meaning to talk to Mrs. Wishart about the um, PNC meeting and... Oh, you've got plenty of time to talk about that later, yeah. don't you? There's no need to, you know, this no. is a semi-formal. It's for having fun. You don't, don't discuss it. No, no, you don't do that. Oh, no, we can talk about it any time. Yeah, well, yes. any time, any, all night, all day, any, any time. Yeah, so why don't we, I've, I'll, you know, I must go now. Yeah, so oh, yeah, you, you go yeah. off. No, really, it's yes. fine. Thank no, you so much. Mind. But it's fine, really. Let's go. Come on. I think you well, should stay you here. Well, you see, I really, there's just... I just need your help to move something. I just something. need to ask Stephanie. See, I'm not a very question. strong, and you've got these no, really, strong I was muscles. Well, and I just Samantha. Need to... 
Well, Stephanie... Why don't you I'll... go and help Samantha? I'll, I'll go, go and help you. Yes, she, she'll I'll just run out soon if there's anyone smoking. Yes, go, go, Sh Should go. I come with you, Stephanie? No, 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 no you should... Did anybody, did anybody see a four scene? What did you see? Uh, a couple of two scenes and mm -hmm. a game four scene and another couple of two scenes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's no the keeping the other scenes. two people on the boil while you are <coughs> hammering the first. The other two people still have got to be laid upon. They've still got to be manipulated. A couple of times when there were momentary three scenes there. But it broke down into gang scenes. It broke up into a tug of war mm. where one person in the middle and two people <laughs> pulling on either end of it. <laughs> no, I don't think you're quite up to a four scene yet. We are. We're just having a bad day. What, what, <laughs> what were you about to say? Say, do you think that that's one of the reasons why that is? Is because the actions you plot with some people are stronger, and the other actions you plot on another person are maybe a submissive action. All so these... therefore, it gets lost when it becomes. Yeah. That's one reason, but again, your playing of it has still got to involve a very quick wit, yeah. very quick ability to switch from one side to the other. Whether there's a strong, whether there are dominant actions to be played, passive actions to be played, you can still play a strong action on a passive action. Mm. But the important thing is to be able to keep it under control, to be aware of it sufficiently, to know what it needs at any particular time. I mean, in everyday life, you do this kind of thing. Mm. Yes, you do. You go to a party, presumably chatting to one particular person. You see another person standing across the room. You think you'll big note yourself a little bit by raising your voice and banging on a show, grandstanding for these people, without skipping a beat mm. with the people you're talking to over here. You'll be playing three scenes. Or at least you'll be playing a main line on one person and a supplementary on the other. And then, if, for example, the other person says, oh, I noticed you looking in my direction, and you start chatting up this person, you don't leave the, the first person for dead. The first person still becomes involved. Oh, you, you know my friend, don't you? Or my friend was talking about you, and you keep both of them together. But do you know what I think? Because we only plotted mainline actions and didn't plot supplementary. You don't need to. No, but no, just psychologically, I know when we did our three scene in class the other day and we plotted our supplementaries and they were uppermost in our mind as our main lines were, yeah. as in on paper, yeah. they were, we were playing consistently the actions on each other. But when, just, just, it's just a psychological block or something, when you've just plotted that one action for some reason, because I mean, this is like AB stuff, playing one action and well, I'm still waiting for you to recite the ABC alphabet. <laughs> I just think it's a psychological thing in that we are used to plotting the supplementaries and have them having them conscious and when it, it has to become a subconscious thing and allowing a main line to become a supplementary, it's something that well, I haven't well, I adjusted myself to yet and that's what made me maybe cut off. Okay. If uh, that is the problem, then solve it. If you know what the answer to the problem is, do mm. it. Yes, by all means. Yeah. But in order to structure a three scene where each of you seems busy with the other two people and don't leave them for dead, this, aside from money on the bank, which it is, mm. is still a very good test of your playing a main line and a supplementary. Yeah. Then if a single object is both a recipient of a main line and supplementary, that should be relatively easier because you don't have to change focus. Here, if there are two other people, I have to take in your set of reactions with all its resonances, then switch and take in her set of reactions fully and still keep your set in the back of my mind mm. and then back to you and keep her set in the back of my mind. So I'm imagining what I'm doing to you, how it's affecting her. 
and in effect I have to jump between you. But if you're playing a main line and a supplementary onto a common object, then you're right there. All pictures I'm getting from you. Mm. I don't have to turn you off and switch to somebody else. So if you can learn to play a good three scene, playing a main line and supplementary on another person is a piece of cake. Easy, isn't it, to Can talk about? Can you show us their three scene where they did both, where they plotted both the main line and the supplementary and see whether that does in fact work? By all means, but I'd, I've yet to now. see them play a three scene or a four scene, let's see. But like Rachel was just saying that that helps her. It helped her focus on one person at a time. Yeah. But what was happening to the other person while she was playing these busy things on one person? Just for one moment out there, she was playing a four scene. She was contributing to a four scene. But there again, she wasn't taking into account necessarily all the nuances she was getting back from each of the three people. You were controlling these three people, but you weren't necessarily receiving from them. No, because you were so busy hitting them. Actually, my turn to go out and look after the kids now, so um, off you go then. If, well, if you could you. come with me, oh, no, no, I will. No, I said I would pull forward. Thank really. you, darling, but I really need a big, strong man. Oh, see, well, actually, I've got a bit of lifting to do. Actually, look, oh. Mr. Hines is just over there. Yes, but he's not as big, is he? Oh, he's very strong. He's strong. Oh like no, I'm looking for somebody big. Oh, okay. Right. So, well, um, you want well, me to do that? I, what a pity you can't do that. We'll just go well, I actually that wanted then, to talk okay? to, to Miss, Mrs. Wishart. Well, you can come back oh, and talk no. to her. Yeah, we can talk any time. Come, come on, and it'll only take about well, five minutes. Well, it's just, it's, okay. it's very... It's come, very, hello. Oh, it, it's very important and... and, and uh, sorry. Well, look, you can, you can see her in about half an hour, okay? So why don't you just come with me now? Well, you see, it's... It's very important that I, I, I talk to I think Mrs. Wishart. No, really, um, I, I, I said know. that I would go and, and do it, so I'll just go in and look after her. Great! We'll help you. Would you like... Just impacted by it, you were doing it. Okay. Well, look, it's my turn to go and have a bit of a search round, see what's happening. So, how about you come help me? Well, I'd okay, really you like can have a look around I, with I, me. I, I, I can do it. Got to see. Oh, really? No, there's no well, need. Well, well I mean, they just came back in. They That's just came right. back in from out there, and everything's fine. Yes, but I just, I just yes. thought there might be some moving. I think there's some moving I have to do. So I really need, you know, somebody strong who can help me with the oh, moving. Oh, well, I'm strong. I can do it. Oh yeah. no, but I really need, you know, a man for this. Well, there's plenty of men over there. Look, take your, cho take yes. a choice. Yes, but they're not as big, are they? And I really was looking for someone big because you know how heavy. Stephanie, I, I'd really like to talk to you about um, certain matters and... Oh, well, look, that's fine. You don't mind waiting a half hour or no, so. No, no, that's Would fine. You? So you can come back, talk to you in about half an hour or so, OK? Out uh, we go. Well, it's very important. Okay. It's, it's very important that I, that I speak to Stephanie. And uh, oh, yes. No, really, I, it's my turn to go out. I'll go out and help Sam. I'll just oh, go out and see if there's we'll anything. We'll go as well, and then you can talk oh, to her too. Okay? Let's all go. Yes, OK. That's the rare moment when we talk to each other. <laughs> We're going to take the talk for a moment here. Which part do you want to do? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's going to be cold down there, I think it will drag up a little bit. Also, it may rain. I shouldn't be listening. I shouldn't be looking at the camera. <laughs> I'm supposed to be looking at you. Adoring. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never believe that. Never. Now, as we're sitting here, one of the birds is going to shit on us. <laughs> 
be down in that story anyway. Maybe a goldfish is going to come up and bite us. We should have many days with that. See, can't ask them. Is this going on for ten minutes? Mm -hmm. Do you think it'd be a good idea to get Millie and Daisy out here? I think it'd be a good idea to get a get. Sound of crunching. <laughs> Disappear. That's a good sound stick, isn't it? That's a very. Yeah. Is it Daisy? Oh, it's bird. oh, there's a cat. Look, a cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> flying cat. <laughs> there's a flying cat up there. Look. I know, that's enough. No, 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 no biting oh, ears. No biting ears. <laughs> that's a ball in the air. There's a ball in the air. Take it for a walk. Come on, Daddy. Oh, great. Thank you. 